We're joined by Cade Flat of Benton, Kentucky, population 4,756. He runs for Marshall County High School. This past weekend, Cade won four state titles, 400, the 800, the 4x4, and the 4x8. Cade, congratulations. But that's not why you're on this podcast. I mean, that's good, but we usually focus on the national level and indoors. Cade won the New Balance Indoor Nationals to burst on the scene. Soon after that, he ran an outdoor race at Ole Miss, where he raced NCAA Indoor Champion of the Mile, Mario Garcia Romo, nearly losing. Afterwards, he posted to Twitter, in two months' time, I rewrite history. He almost rewrote history last month in May at Icon Stadium in New York, where he ran 146.51, just missing Michael Granville's 26-year record at 800 meters. This weekend, he'll be running the New Balance Outdoor Nationals for the first time ever at Franklin Field in Pennsylvania, where he hopes to break Michael Granville's record. Cade, thanks for joining us. No problem. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And Cade, you're a refreshing voice in track and field. You're young, so maybe you're refreshing to old guys like myself no matter what. But you're not only running fast, you're a big talker, you're confident. I like it. Is, is, does that just come naturally to you? Yeah, it's uh, it's kind of came naturally. I've always been a uh, competitive person. You can ask my siblings, uh, <laughs> my uh, my brother, my dad. You know, whether it's uh, you know track and field or basketball or cornhole. You know, we're we're, uh, we're talking to each other and uh, you know letting them know who's who's the best and stuff like that. So yeah, it's it's kind of always always been there. And uh, yeah, just just letting them just letting people know Kate Flat. I think the sport needs more personalities. I mean, we got them, but. A little trash talking, I think, is good. Usually, we don't get it at the high school level, so yeah, it's yeah, great. Not, not scared, not afraid, be different. Before we talk about your career and how you got here, let's talk about this weekend. You've put it out there. Is the goal solely the record? Franklin Field, you can get bad weather, you can get wind. Mm -hmm. Talk about the goal for this weekend. Yeah, goal for this weekend is the record. Um, you know, that's that's what we've been eyeing. That's what we've, you know, I had one forty five. I had 146.45 in the legs May 20th uh, at Trials of Miles and just did just little instances that cost me that record, you know, in split seconds. Uh, but, you know, I, we've been we've been shooting for something way past that record, to be honest, uh, not planning on skimming by. So we'll we'll see what happens, see how it unfolds. But, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready for it. And is there any competition for you? I know Will Sumner's not in this one, but mm -hmm. did you expect people to be with you? Um. To be honest, I don't think anybody's crazy enough to be with me at at uh, after 500. Uh, we'll we'll just have to see how it shakes out. Um, I'm not too familiar with the field, uh, if I'm being honest. But you know, it's if I'm going out there to break the national record and going to run the fastest time I've ever ran, then there shouldn't be anybody in front of me anyway. So I can't be worried about that. And I hadn't even thought about this. Are, are you gonna have a rabbit? Yes, yes, we'll have a rabbit. Okay, good because. Like, you know, USA Nationals, they can't have a rabbit. And I'm like, okay, if, he, if he's going to solo this thing, it's even crazier. Yeah, and, and and that's the thing. Like, I've I've always been a guy I can run fast by myself. At New Balance Indoor Nationals, I ran fast by myself. Um, I think that I, I could, but it's, you know, if the option's there. And this national meet, I don't think I don't think the field's as competitive as it could be. Uh, that we have – this has been the high school season with the most, you know, top 800 guys ever. I think, I think historically, if we put everybody in the same race, it'd be the biggest race in high school history, but it just didn't happen. And everyone's split up and doing different events and off events and stuff like that. So I think the best way to go is uh, just a rabbit. Just help me out a little bit. Uh, give me something to something to chase and, you know, not really plan on running 146.44, you know. So I want something real fast. I want something impressive. I want something that's going to gonna last 26 years like the previous one. Wow. I assume there's at least going to be a 45 in there you're hoping for. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. I was about to say it. I th almost every fast 800 meters has a rabbit, but that's not the case. The greatest one of all time, David Radish is in 2012. Right. No rabbit. Let's see. 2012. Oh my gosh. So you were eight. You have no memory of that race. Yeah. I, 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 <laughs> uh, I remember the London Olympics. Barely. I barely, I mean, I, I really wasn't even into the Rio Olympics. If I'm being honest, I, I maybe watched Bolt and Michael Phelps 
uh, I wasn't, I was, I just got in, that was my first year in track. So I wasn't even thinking about that uh, at the time. So really the, just last year, only Olympics that I've paid attention to. How long have you been, how familiar now are you with the sort of top end of the sport? Donovan Brazier was the world champion from the U.S. That was, I guess, now three years ago. I've been, I guess, 2019 is when I really started. So that was my freshman year. That was when I really started keeping up with, like, I guess, pro stuff. But really, I'm a, I think I'm a pretty ca casual fan when it comes to track, if I'm honest. Uh, you know, I'm always watching the top 800s. I uh, always tune in to watch, like, you know, Fred Curley and Christian Coleman, those guys in those events. But I'm not too big in anything else if it you know it's if it's not something that i'm focused on or or if i'm bored i'll put on a, a 10k and just sit there and kind of look on my phone and then look up and just see what's going on you know what i mean but i'm i'm, I'm kind of a casual at the, at the track sport sport of track hey I'm a, I'm a former 10k runner i resent that that's no, actually <laughs> 10 10k is pretty boring for most of the time you know but yeah but sometimes i swear sometimes i'm just like i really, I really want to watch a 10k it's like sometimes i want i want to watch golf for no reason you know it's just like I just want to just study and let watch it play out, you know. I, I want to watch those guys move and just see what happens. The 10K and NCAA championships was was awesome, you know. And I, I watched that, uh, you know, had had some drama in there, and you know, it was good. It was good. So it just depends on the race. Yeah, it's true. But would you consider yourself more of a sprinter than a distance runner? <sighs> and and that's what I don't know because like. I'm not, I don't really consider myself, I can just consider myself an 800 guy, to be honest, just a pure 800 specialist. Um, I think I'm on the faster side of the 800. Like, I think I'd be more competitive. I think I can run a real fast four right now. Uh, I'd be more competitive in the four side than the mile side. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm just right in the middle. I think I'm just an 800 specialist. It's your best event, but you run 46.89. I've only, th you only run a couple of miles, but 4.12.97, is that right? Yeah, so that, that was the only 16, uh, only four lapper I, I did this year. Um, just wanted to see what could happen. Uh, yeah, and, and that 46.89, I ran that. So I, I got in two 400s this year, or three, three 400s this year. And, like, you know, I, I think I can run a lot faster than that in a 400. But it's just what I came up with and not really not really a focus to hit again. So For the mile, for no, someone who never runs it, or 1,600, that's pretty good. Is it true you run 15 miles a week? Yeah, so uh, that was a lie. And I, I didn't know I was lying about it at the time uh, when, I, when I came out there and said that I did that. But, yeah, I went back and looked at my training and kind of went through just random weeks, and I couldn't find one over five miles, uh, five miles a week. So uh, Wait, I don't – What? Yeah. I, uh, five. Five. I, I, had, I, had a, I had a week where I hit three. I had a week where I hit four, and I had a week where I hit five. And I, I couldn't find one over five the rest of the season. Okay, before we got started, I was asking if you're familiar with the Let's Run message boards, and you are a little bit. Okay, they're, they're, but those people are losing themselves right now. They're going to get on my case if I don't qu <laughs> question you in great detail about this. Yeah. Does that count like your – do you warm up? You're not counting your warm up? Like, what are you talking about? Even so, your, your, your intervals would almost add up to three miles, I feel like. I don't count my warm up. My warm up is a 300 meter jog around the lap. I don't even do a full lap. My warm up every day at practice. So yeah, I do a 300 meter uh, warm up. Then I go into like my drills and stuff. Um, but yeah, and that's that's what was that's what's so weird to me. It's like there's no like how do I only have three miles for this week. But yeah, you know, it's some like um, for the longest time I was only running five days a week. I wouldn't even do six. Um, one day a week would just be like strength, like a body weight circuit or just lifting or something like that. Uh, for the longest time but yeah so like some weeks i'll only run five days and what one of those days i'll probably get over half my volume for the weekend for the week and then the rest of it's kind of like sprint work speed work um just real short stuff so yeah i really don't really don't go too far so you never go out for a jog no uh actually okay today i went for a 10 minute jog but like it's supposed to be just super easy. Just shake the legs out. Um, and I, I hit, I didn't even, I went like one mile. So <laughs> super easy, super slow. What's the most you've ever, what's the most you've ever run in a week? Most I've ever ran in a week. I don't know about, I don't know about this year. Um, I think, well, I thought, I mean, I thought I was doing 15, but I thought that my uh, highest mile week was 20 this year. Um, way back even before races. 
uh, we did. Um, but it was, I was gonna pro probably go look back now. It's probably like 10 or so. I guess I'm a little off, but, uh, yeah. So longest, longest run I've ever been on was seven miles. And that was during cross country season, uh, this past year. And that was one time thing. Wasn't fun. Didn't enjoy it. <laughs> wow. So you've, have you ever run an hour? Did that take you an hour? Uh, I have no idea. I have no idea at pacing. I, uh, I haven't charged my watch in months, so I, I don't even, I don't use my watch during workouts or anything like that. So. And you're not, you're not like pulling one over me. This is like, no, this is, this is true. I'm, I'm telling you the wow. truth right here. Yeah. And I, I, I can go get the training log and, and read, read you a week if you want me to, but. Okay. You, you need to get like an NIL deal with some watch company and Strava. Yeah. And people will be amazed. Yeah. It's a, I've, I've never owned, I've never had Strava either. And I get a lot of like hate for that in the running world. It's like, oh yeah, follow my Strava or blah, blah, blah. It's like, I don't even, I don't even use my watch. Like I don't track what I do. I just, I write down in a, in a book what I do and what I think on the day and stuff. But that's uh that's it. I don't have a watch or Strava or keep up with anything like that. Well, I'm, I'm old school. I came of age before Strava. So I applaud yeah. that. <laughs> Looking ahead to Ole Miss, have you coach, talked to coach Van Hoy? Like, I assume he's going to want you to run a little more than that, but like, Hey, this is working. Yeah. Have you thought ahead a little bit? Uh, we've, we talked, um, early on during like the kind of the recruiting and stuff, uh, and he's not, he's not going to be into switching up and putting me on, on distance side. He said, I'm going to be more on the speed side of things, uh, but really haven't been into detail on things like that. Um, we'll just have to see what happens. Cause you know, it could be a thing like my coaches, my high school coach's philosophy is like do as little as possible, getting you to the highest level as possible. So right now I could probably run a decent amount faster in my, in my 800 or in my 400 or whatever, but we're just kind of making sure we're not overtrained, making sure we're undertrained, if anything, uh, going into the next level so we can have that, have that upside. So, uh, we'll just, we'll just have to see what happens, but yeah, I'm, I think I'm going to stick to the more speed side of the 800. You've got tons of upside because there's an endurance component. So, mm -hmm. wow. Once you get some of that, what's your high school coach's name? What's his background? Andrew Johnston. Uh, his, his background is English teacher. He, uh, you know, he helped coach football for the longest time. Uh, he's, he's just, he's a great guy. He's into it. Um, you know, he's, he's really young. Uh, that's his background. He doesn't really have a coaching background. Like I'm not, I don't really have a professional coach or, anything crazy uh it's just i'm on that english teacher training and it's working so sticking to it this sounds fake this is too good to be true i like <laughs> this how old's your coach uh i don't want i don't want to disrespect him but he's young i don't i want to say like early 30s early 30s maybe like 30 31 something like so that he's young are people now like contacting him giving him advice or he tunes, tunes it out uh, I don't. I don't think anybody's really contacted him. Uh, some people try to contact me and, and tell me what uh, you know I should be doing and shouldn't be doing. But you know, it's it. I'm with that guy till the end. So I like loyalty. It's working well for you. So stick with it. Yes. Yes. That's right. We talked about it a little bit earlier. So it sounds like will there be no races with Will Sumner this year? Maybe at USA's, or do you think it's going to happen? He's doing a U twenties as far as I'm concerned, as far as I know. Um, I don't even know if he's doing the 800. He might be doing the four. Uh, that's, that's what I know. And I, uh, when he first entered into Brooks, I kind of saw that and I was like, okay, it could be a stacked, stacked race. You know, we had, he had plant, uh, Sumner, and then I was gonna, I was gonna follow him there, but it, he was in the 400 and then it turned out he was in the four. So I was like, okay, you know, so that's, that's when I, I decided to go to new balance and, uh, I'm really happy with that decision. Uh, never been to Philadelphia, but yeah. So I don't. I don't think there's going to be a, a flat Sumner matchup, but we'll just have to see what happens. Yeah, as a high scorer, how do you pick which race to go to? I mean, you've got all these options. Yeah, and that's and that's what you know stinks. Um, to be honest, it sucks because, like, to be a national champion for me in my mind to legitimize it, it's you know you can go to Brooks PR and win nationals and be a national champion. Say you're a national champion, but you're not the you're not the best in the country or some guy from New Balance ran faster than you. You know what I mean? So I, I wish it was just one meet. I wish we could get together and it just they just pull it in and say, hey, this is the national championships. One brand takes it over, whatever. You know, I, I don't care. But 
yeah, it sucks. I mean, all the competitions dispersed and people are going on offense and some people aren't even in national championships this year. So it's, it's difficult. Uh, you know, I personally, I, I just wanted to, New Balance has been great. That's where I started with New Balance. It's where uh, people met me. Um, so I was like, okay, I'll, I'll finish the high school career with New Balance. Uh, and then I've never been to Philadelphia. Rock, I've grown up on Rocky movies. So, you know, running up those steps, let's that's that's check that off the bucket list. We'll do that. Um, but yeah, so it, it was pretty easy decision for me. And Franklin Field's awesome from what I've seen. So I like to run there and have a moment there. So Yeah, it's a great place. And there's so much running history there. And we were talking before we started that uh, Benton, I mean, you're two hours from anything. Mm -hmm. Nashville, Tennessee, I think, because you said it's the closest big city to you. So Nothing around here. Yeah, you should have a good time in uh, Pennsylvania. So what's you said you're not going to do the under-20s, it sounds like. Are you going to try to do USA's? What's the goal for you? What's the rest of the summer look like? USA's USA's is the uh, the goal for me at the moment. I think that I'm in shape to run something pretty fast and – uh, you know, I think getting that final would be huge. Uh, that'd be, and for me, you know, the U twenties is a making team USA and stuff. That's a, you know, that'd be a big honor and being on a team USA for U 20 and things like that. But I think that lining up with the best in the world at, while I have the opportunity as a high school kid, I think that's something special. And I think that's a, you know, this Marshall County community that, you know, seeing me on TV, things like that. Uh, yeah, it's a, that's a pretty big deal for them too. Uh, so I think me had doing that and that experience, you know, uh, I do that now. I line up against these guys when I'm young, the, you know, the, the little young chimp, the the kid, you know, and then two years net, two years later, I can line up against them as, you know, King Kong, see what happens. So I'll have that experience under my belt and, you know, be ready for it. Wow. I'm, I'm impressed taking on the big boys. Cause, <laughs> cause you said, I think it was after the 147 where you nearly beat, uh, Mario Garcia Romo, and you said, I'm not scared to race anybody, anytime, anywhere, at any level. I, I guess you meant it. Yeah, no, it, and I'm not, you know, all year long it's been that way. I'll, I'll race anybody. Uh, it's uh, it's not something I'm scared of. I'm to put myself out there to, uh, and I think I'm in shape. You know, I'm, I always get on the line, you know, full confidence, but no matter who you are, anything can happen. So, And, and that race, I didn't realize you were close to him. Mm -hmm. right it was like point 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 two or something yeah it was it was right there i uh made a real uh gutsy move 300 meters out went around him uh had the lead and then coming right off the final turn i swung a little wide for whatever reason and so i I was in like end of lane one almost in lane two and he just sneaks up right on the inside of me right right there and it was like you know he's great if i'm gonna lose if i'm gonna lose to somebody i'll lose to the ncaa champion you know a rebel uh mario he's a great guy uh all props to that guy um but yeah i just i swung a little wide and he, he snuck up on me then you know it's a spanish rocket just right past me right there at the end i mean the number one rule of 800 or of any running never get beat on the inside yep that happened that won't happen again right won't happen again no sir wow but that's i mean that's crazy like you're, you're not afraid but yeah to beat usa's you could probably make the final running a 145 do you think a 144 is in the legs this year we're going to see what happens June 17th, Friday at uh, Franklin Field. I think that'll tell me everything and tell people everything they need to know what's, uh, for the remainder of the season, what kind of shape I'm in and what I can do. Uh, but, yeah, we'll just have to see. I, I think making that final is doable. Um, ready to put myself out there, see what happens. And I heard on another podcast or interview or something, you started off running. Like your parents would give it to you for punishment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they would. Uh, so it was like punishment. Like when me and my brother were fighting, my dad would send me and him like on a mile run or something. We was like, so we had this neighbor who's half a mile down and then he'd be like, go run to their house, you know, touch the mailbox, come back. And I know him. So if you don't touch that mailbox, they're going to tell me and you're going to be in trouble, you know? <laughs> so he'd, he'd send us off that. We'd be fighting or something. He'd send us on a mile. We'd come back. We'd be too tired to fight each other. We're like, hey, dad, can I, you know, play PS2, you know, all day whatever because ps2 was out at the time he's like okay no go run a mile first you have to you can but you have to run a mile first and so i mean that that always sucked i hated running to begin with because it was always like a punishment thing and bryce my older brother uh, he's two years older than me he would be doing he might go for three miles i might go for one mile because we were young at the time uh and you just you know 
And then once I was able to run with him, we'd both do three miles or something. He, as you know, competitive as he is, competitive as I was, we'd sit there and try to race the thing. But he would just get the best of me every single time. He's just older. And I'd, you know, I'd be crying and just upset. And, you know, he beat me. He left me by my own. I gotta, I gotta run a mile by myself now. Uh, but yeah, that, that was that was at an early age. Um, and it wasn't an everyday thing. Like I wasn't like training or like an avid runner. It was just like, you know, you guys are getting on my nerves. Go run and get get worn out a little bit. <laughs> It sounds like you might might have been running more when you're like eight than you are now. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe you know. But yeah, no, it it was an everyday thing. My, you know, it wasn't ever like a overwork. You know, it was, it was maybe like twice a week I'd run like a mile or or something like that. But you know, it just varied. You know how good I was. <laughs> Did your parents do track? How fast was your brother? No, my my uh, mom didn't do any sports, and my dad was a basketball guy. He's like six seven. So uh, my Right. My brother, he ran cross country as a sixth grader, but he was growing really fast at the time. So he actually got injured. He was, he was good uh, around here and he got injured his first year doing it. His hip, like hips were really open or something. He was like six, three in sixth grade. Like he was growing really fast. Wow. And uh, so he got injured. So that's why uh, they didn't put me in anything until uh, sixth grade as well. But I didn't do cross country or anything like that. Um, but yeah, he, he came back his sophomore year and ran. He was a, like 201 guy and a 51 400 as his first year in track, which, you know, pretty good, I think. Um, but yeah, he, he had potential to be really well, but he just, uh, yeah, he didn't want to be there. So he's six, seven, I haven't seen any six, seven, 800 meter runners. <laughs> yeah, no, I, uh, yeah, my dad, no, he, he said he ran track, like he ran the 100, the 200, and the shot put. So that's, that's what he did. Well, everyone, I'm glad you found the 800. It sounds like, you know, you had a little unorthodox training as a kid and definitely now, but it's working for you. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, for sure. And yeah, I was a, like, speaking of finding the 800, I was, I was about to quit track. It was my like first meet I ran around the mile and I did high jump and I loved, loved high jump and then I hated the mile and then coach put me in second meet, put me in the 800 and then I won it. And it was like, it was the number one time in the country for a sixth grader at the time of my first one. And then I was just like, Oh, I didn't really know what mile split was or anything like that at the time. And someone just told me about it. And I was like, okay, yeah, yeah, whatever, you know? And then they were like, no, no, seriously. And then I was like, okay, I'll stick around for a little bit. And then it kind of just uh, took off. Wow. How fast did you run? It was a 226. And then I ended up getting that to a 208 my sixth grade year. Wow. Pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I brought it down, brought it down. Well, good luck this weekend. Thank you for joining us and keep being you people, you know, you got a few haters in let's run, but most people, I think deep down, they love the personality. Yeah. Yeah. And that, you know, there's, there's definitely some hate, but I see a lot more support and I get support all the time every day from uh, kids all over. So yeah, keep being me, keep being different. So I appreciate you having me. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you. Yes, sir. See ya.